In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the associative files and how Inventor links itself to different file types throughout the design process. From our working files directory, I have four files open right now. I have long slot runner IPT, the loader IAM, the loader IPN, and the long slot runner DWG. Here I have the part file. Realistically, this is where the most design intelligence will reside. This is where it controls all of your sizing, your holes, your dimensional controls for your parts, and really the truth lies with the part model. This is perhaps the most singularly important file that you have because most of your design data goes into these guys. I also have a loader IAM open, so I'll go ahead and jump over to that. Here you can see the long slot runner is used in this dump truck. So I have the arm here being controlled to be attached to different components inside the assembly. On the IPN, this is an explosion environment, and here I have that exploded out as well. So these are all different files so far. And I also have the drawing created for it with some dimensions on it. Now when I go back to the original long slot runner IPT, and I'm just going back and forth through these little tabs at the bottom of the screen here, and I make a change to it. So let's say I make a change of five to eight inches. Quite significant. As you can see, it's giving me a nice update for how that sketch is being adjusted. As soon as I go up here and click on my local update in the upper left area of the screen, you can see the changes that that goes through. Because the part file contains all this design information, the assembly, the IPN, the DWG, are all referencing off of this part file. So if I go over to the loader IAM, here I can see the long slot runner has become eight inches long over here as well. Now this happens because when I bring this part into this design, I'm basically referencing it in. It doesn't copy it in like it would in, let's say, a vector-based software. So here, it has a live link to what that initial geometry was. On the left-hand side, I can actually see it listed here in the assembly list. I have two variations of this. I have occurrence one and occurrence two of the long slot runner. Now, it's not really in position right now because it's waiting for me to update the assembly. I'll go ahead and process that update as well. So now you can see the bucket arm is much longer with that dimensional change. Over in the IPN file, same scenario. This is linked to that assembly, which has a link to that part. So therefore, this will also update as well. When I go over to the drawing, I will see the drawing has updated. The dimensions have automatically updated for me as well, based on that dimensional change. Again, the part here is basically being referenced in. It's not necessarily being copied in. As I go back to the original file here, if I make changes to it again, let's say I return this back to its original five and a half, I'll go ahead and update that. Again, go back through each of the files, updating them to see the changes taking place. This one's already been updated, that's good. And the drawing again automatically updates. So this saves a significant amount of time so that I don't have to go to each one of these four files and make the same dimensional change each and every time. It's basically controlled in one location, that part file, and then how it updates throughout the design is controlled by the associative links being generated in the software. Now, how these get generated? Well, that's something we experienced throughout this course, but we need to understand that things do have a link together. Very important concept, especially if you're coming from a software that never dealt with this before. So this is a great look at the associative files of Autodesk Inventor.